Welcome to this new tutorial about Fixed Networks, a computer mod for Satisfactory. Today we're going to talk about how you can code in Fixed Networks with Lua. At first you need a basic computer setup, resulting in a computer case with a Lua CPU and a bit of RAM. That's everything you need to get started with some Lua code. In the UI of the computer case, you need to go to the EEPROM tab and insert the EEPROM into the EEPROM slot. Now we can start coding. The first program everyone writes in a new programming language is Hello World. For this, we're gonna start with the, uh, with the function print and then followed by a string literal that tells us Hello World to print Hello World into the console. If we now push the button, you can see it prints the text we have inserted up here into the console. Hello world. So this is the function we're gonna call, which is print. Then we have our parameter list within those two brackets. In here, separated by commas, you can have multiple parameters. Like we could also have a second string. So we could say world, for example, here. And then hello over there. And then we can print that and these two parameters are just simply then separated by a space. Because print is a special so-called veridic function and can have multitude, uh, a variable amount of arguments you can provide. To fully understand what is happening here, you need to be aware of that everything in Lua is a value in a variable, for example. Like even the function itself, our print function that does the action to actually write the text we provide here and uh, write it into the console down here. This is a function and this is, a is still a variable. This is a variable called print. A variable for now is just simply a placeholder for any kind of value. Fixed Networks does internally already set this print variable to hold the value of the print function, which then actually does our call. So what we do here is we say, okay, access the print variable, give me the value behind that. Okay. Next, we're gonna call this. So telling Lua to call the function, the function value behind that, is done with these, uh, with these brackets. In those brackets, you can now provide different uh, di further uh, more different expressions that evaluate down to other values. And you can separate multitude of those by using a comma. These two parentheses or everything in between is called a string literal. A string is just simply a sequence of characters you can like a, a just simpler text you can write onto a screen we're gonna talk about those in a, in depth in a later tutorial for now you need to be aware of a literal a literal is just simply a value specific in here like we explicitly describe a single value we don't describe a placeholder or something with a literal we describe a constant value. This value doesn't change anywhere. This is the text hello and nothing more. And the literature uh, essentially just describes this is a static value. This is this is a value, okay? And uh, literal allows us to like input a value into the program code directly without needing it to read it from an external source, essentially. This is a literal and so that means we have right now in here two literals. We have first this string literal that provides the hello text and then we also have the string literal world exclamation mark. An expression in a programming language is similar to like a console command or something. Though the important difference is that usually these can the, that there can be like expressions within an expression. So, if we have a look at our code here, you can see that all of this is like one action. We say, okay, we want to print something onto the screen. So this is already one expression. 
and this is now built up of multiple parts. So first of all, we just say, okay, um, we want to access the uh, this fu uh, the the function value within the print variable. So we uh, just type in the name of the print variable to say, okay, now give me the print variable. I want to do something with it. Next up is we have these two brackets going on here and these then say okay like I want to call now the I want to call the value in the print variable essentially like I want to call the value of the previous expression here which was getting a variable and like calling on uh, usually only works for functions so that means it's Im it Im implies that the value of the variable before here, like the print variable, has to be a function. Otherwise, it would complain. So this is the second step. Next step is we have our parameter list. And the parameter list, as already said, consists of expressions separated by a comma. So that means it now goes in here, looks at this part of the code separately and tries to evaluate down the expression. So what we could do here is again call a, other, a, call a different function that might return a value. It's just that we say this here just simply is an expression and whatever results out of this expression we're gonna pass to the print function. Okay, that's essentially everything that is that happens here. And uh, like I said we could now do again a, a different function call that then actually returns something. A print function call doesn't return something, but like there are functions that return something and we could put that directly in here. Or as you can see here, we just say we put in a literal because a literal just simply takes the stuff we, t uh, we typed in and uh, like loads it as a value and then just returns it. Like the expression then evaluates down to that exact value. And we then pass this value, this expression, as a parameter to the parameter list of this function. So that the function gets the hello and the word exclamation mark. You can all, so for now, we have put it in expressions within expressions. We have now the expression print, followed by, uh, by uh, like uh, the expression print which is just accessing the print variable followed by the call uh, by the calling statement so that we call the function now and then with two different uh, with two parameters and each parameter again is its own expression that it relates down to any kind of value but what now uh, what is now if I want to call a sec uh, like a second time print so like I cannot put it in here or something to say okay now do the print again like it could work like in this case it would work but like it's a bit more complex than that since we said this is a variable arg amount of arg uh, this has a variable amount of arguments so what can you do about that in Lua you usually just say okay you go into a new line and then you can start a completely new expression a completely new statement, a completely new f uh, call of a function or a setting a variable or whatever you might want to do. In a new line, you can then do uh, such a new expression, a new command. So like we can now say print test. Okay, so again, we, ex uh, we say give me the print variable, then do a call onto the value within the uh, within the uh, within the print uh, within the print variable with parameters only one parameter this time and that is this expression here give me what the express uh, uh, give me the values the expression returns which is in this case a string test important to note is that expressions or like functions calls and stuff may return multiple values at once so this is not like in other languages like uh, like in C++, C++, C Sharp or Java it's you can have multiple return values essentially and like since everything is ex uh, essentially a value and an expression um, you, that means like an expression can evaluate down to multiple values at once 
So, yeah, so we're gonna print that. So now the lure, uh, like the lure code gets now executed from top to bottom. So it go, uh, so it starts up here, it load, uh, so like it starts at the very top, it loads the print variable and other stuff that uh, is provided by fixed, net, uh, by fixed networks. And then it goes into this step here, into our source code we provide, and it goes into the first line, sees this expression evaluates it processes this expression uh, so that it uh, so it does the it, it takes the variable does the call on it the it uh, gets the two values of the two param ex parameter expressions it got passed it down to the function call the function and it outputs hello world and then after that it goes into the next line which is in this case print test does the same thing again. Okay, it looks at the whole expression. It sees, okay, this is a this is a function call. So, okay, the variable, what variable is it? Okay, it's just, it, it, it is print. Good, good, good. Now we have our calling statement, so our, our, our parameter list. So what parameters do we have? Okay, we have one parameter with one expression. Okay, let's have a look what the expression is. Oh, okay, this is a string literal, so let's evaluate that down. Okay, that's now a the string containing the value te uh, containing test so it's a string value containing test pass it to the function call the function and done and then after that it sees okay there are no any that there are no more functions left there are no more statements to process and the computer stops again so that's why like as long as the Lua environment sees okay I have stuff to do I have stuff to do I have stuff to do this this icon here will be green okay if on the other hand like uh, the it crashes like there it has, there is something faulty has happened or something or like the program has finished uh, the this led will turn red so like if it, as it, if it uh, turned off so if you press the button now you can see it uh, was like it was very slightly green like you were not able to see it because everything happened at once within one game uh, with one render frame of the game but like it happens <laughs> and we now can see okay we got our hello world first and then we got our test this is always the case so the order of the commands you provide here is not random it goes from top to bottom through there are some control statements you can use to like repeat commands and stuff that's more co complex we're gonna talk about that later but for now you can just say the program goes from top to bottom and uh, executes each command or expression such a programming language also has like something you could say it's a it's grammar or something okay this is also called the syntax and this just simply describes how you have to write your code so that it properly works for example you cannot remove this bracket here otherwise the lua uh, the lua compiler would say okay um where does this parameter list end i don't know what 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 should i do and it fails and this fails in the compilation so if we have a look at this we can see in our EEP ROM in line 2 it fails with following message a bracket a closing bracket was expected near end of file so that means it just simply wanted uh, it simply requires a closing parameter uh, like a closing parameter list because uh, open one isn't isn't allowed so it requires this or for example we could also do the similar thing with the string literal now it also doesn't know what to do when does the string end and when does the parameter list end it doesn't know because it's the, uh, because this bracket is counted to the par uh, is counted to the string literal and we s we since we haven't closed the string literal and we haven't closed the parameter list so we're gonna try to execute that it says unfinished string near end of file because it doesn't even come close to the uh, to the ending parameter list because there is still like everything behind that is a string so first of all we have to do is to close the string so if we do that now like we just say okay we directly do what the message says us we're gonna close the string run it again again as usual uh, as we have seen previously 
the parameter list is still open so we again need to close the parameter list and then the code will work again this time with a bracket in here because we have put it in into our string literal as here we will talk about this function in a later tutorial but for now this just simply causes a runtime exception so if we execute this small little code here you can see this green lamp lights up so this essentially means okay we try to run the code but an error has occurred and we can see in here what error has happened so we can see where the uh, where so like you know where the error has occurred in our EEP room in line 2 with a given message oh no and then we also have a stack trace back which allows us to trace back like where the issue happened and you can see in function error EEP room in the main chunk so like me, a chunk is essentially like a function body like the stuff we write here these multiple these multiple commands after each other those are a chunk so we now know okay in, the, in line two in here we have now triggered an exception an error exception with the message oh no because like uh, we just want to test this in front uh, errors can uh, like runtime like syntax errors usually happen if you messed up something in the grammar essentially of the programming language and runtime errors you don't really have usually you don't necessarily have an effect on those they just simply those are usually logic uh, logic errors you have typed in. so like for example um, you're gonna try like I don't know like you're gonna try to access a constructor and it's disconnected it will then fail with a message because that's just simply not possible or for example if you try to call a function that doesn't exist you then it will also fail. like for example if we if we do this here pretty quickly we're gonna try to call the test function essentially it will say attempt to call a nil value global test because like the the uh, it tries to uh, it tries to get the value of the test variable and this gets evaluated to nil and nil is its own data type this is not a function it's just simply nothing and so it's not able to call the function because the this calling uh, like function calling requires the variable to be a function to contain a function value but it does not it contains a nil value so the error uh, so like uh, and this just simply means okay we are not able to call this function because it just simply does not exist this was a lot to take in about lua and how it handles stuff internally like expressions commands um, compilation errors and runtime errors just uh, stuff like that I hope it helped you out to get into a bit of Lua coding. From here on out, it should be get farther easy if you fully understand what actually happens here. And everything that is left to say is I was Pano Cardano from Code D from Mesopets and I say bye bye until next time. And as always, keep coding! <laughs>